Lord, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Come, Spirit, blessed with God the Son, and God the Father, ever one, shed forth your grace within our breast, and live in us a ready guest. By every power, by heart and tongue, by act and deed your praise be sung, in flame with perfect love each sense, that other souls may kindle thence. How good God is to Israel, to those who are pure of heart. How good God is to Israel, to those who are pure of heart. Yet my feet came close to stumbling, my steps had almost slipped. For I was filled with envy of the proud, when I saw how the wicked prosper. For them there are no pains, their bodies are sound and sleek. They have no share in sorrows, they are not stricken like others. So they wear their pride like a necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. Their hearts overflow with malice. Their minds seethe with plots. They scoff, they speak with malice. From on high they plan oppression. They have set their mouths in the heavens, and their tongues dictate to the earth. So the people turn to follow them, and drink in all their words. They say, how can God know? Does the Most High take any notice? Look at them, such are the wicked, but untroubled they grow in wealth. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. How good God is to Israel, to those who are pure of heart. Their rejoicing will be turned to weeping, their joy to sorrow. How useless to keep my heart pure, and wash my hands in innocence, when I was stricken all day long. Suffering punishment day after day. And I said, if I should speak like that, I should abandon the faith of your people. I strove to fathom this problem, to have for my mind to understand, until I pierced the mysteries of God and understood what becomes of the wicked, 
How slippery the paths on which you set them. You make them slide to destruction. How suddenly they come to their ruin. Wiped out, destroyed by terrors. Like a dream one wakes from old on. When you wake, you dismiss them as phantoms. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. Their rejoicing will be turned to weeping, their joy to sorrow. All those who abandon you shall perish, but to be near God is my happiness. And so when my heart grew embittered, and when I was cut to the quick, I was stupid and did not understand, no better than a beast in your sight. Yet I was always in your presence. You were holding me by my right hand. You will guide me by your counsel. And so you will lead me to glory. What else have I in heaven but you? Apart from you I want nothing on earth. My body and my heart make for joy. God is my possession forever. All those who abandon you shall perish. You will destroy all those who are faithless. To be near God is my happiness. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will tell of all your works at the gates of the city of Zion. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. All those who abandon you shall perish, but to be near God is my happiness. Your promise is sweet to my taste, Lord. It is sweeter than honey in the mouth. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I was so sure of all this, that I made plans at first to visit you, in order that you might be blessed twice. For I planned to visit you on my way to Macedonia, and again on my way back, and to get help from, from you for my journey to Judea. In planning this, did I appear fickle? When I make my plans, do I make them from selfish motives, ready to say yes, yes, and no, no, at the same time? As God is true, my promise to you was not a yes and a no. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was preached among you by Silas, Timothy and myself, is not one who is yes and no. On the contrary, he is God's yes. For it is he who is the yes to all of God's promises. This is the reason that through Jesus Christ, our amen is said to the glory of God. It is God himself who makes us sure with you of our life in Christ. It is God who, himself who has set us apart, who placed his mark of ownership upon us and who gave, uh, who gave the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the guarantee of all that he has for us. I call God as my witness. He knows my heart. It was in order to spare you that I decided not to go to Corinth. We are not trying to dictate to you what you must believe because you stand firm in the faith. 
Instead, we are working with you for your own happiness. So I made up my mind about this. I would not come to you again to make you sad. For if I were to make you sad, who would be left to cheer me up? Only the very persons I had saddened. That is why I wrote that letter to you. I did not want to come to you and make you sad by the very people who should make me glad. For I am convinced that when I am happy, then all of you are happy too. I wrote you with a great, greatly troubled and distressed heart and with many tears, not to make you sad, but to make you realise how much I love you all. Now, if anyone has made somebody sad, he has not done it to me, but to you, or to some of you at least, since I do not want to be too hard on him. It is enough for this person that he has been punished in this way by most of you. Now, however, you should forgive him and encourage him to keep him from becoming too, so sad as to give up completely. Let him know then, I beg you, that you really do love him. I wrote you that letter for this very reason. I wanted to find out how well you had stood the test and whether you are always ready to obey my instructions. When you forgive someone for what he has done, I forgive him too. For when I forgive, if indeed I need to forgive anything, I do it because of you in Christ's presence in order to keep Satan from getting the upper hand over us. For we know what his plans are. It is God himself who makes us sure of our life in Christ. It is God himself who has set us apart and placed his mark of ownership upon us. He sends the Holy Spirit into our hearts thus confirming all that he has done for us. The Lord our God made a covenant with us and spoke to us face to face. He sends the Holy Spirit into our hearts, thus confirming all that he has done for us. A reading from the letter of St Ignatius of Antioch to the Magnesians. Since I have already seen with the eyes of faith and embraced your whole congregation and the persons of the men I named, let me urge on you the need for godly unanimity in everything you do. Let the bishop preside in the place of God and his clergy in place of the apostolic conclave and let my special friends the deacons be entrusted with the service of Jesus Christ who was with the Father from all eternity, and in these last days has been made manifest. Everyone should observe the closest conformity with God. You must show every consideration for one another, never letting your attitude to your neighbour be affected by your human feelings, but simply loving each other consistently in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Allow nothing whatever to exist among you that could give rise to any divisions. Maintain absolute unity with your bishop and leaders as an example to others and a lesson in the avoidance of corruption. In the same way as the Lord was wholly one with the Father and never acted independently of him, either in person or through the apostles, so you yourselves must never act independently of your bishop and clergy. On no account persuade yourselves that it is right and proper to follow your own private judgment. Have a single service of prayer, which everyone, everybody attends, one united supplication, one mind, one hope, in love and innocent joyfulness, all of you together, as though you were approaching the only existing temple of God and the only altar Speed to the one and only Jesus Christ, who came down from the one and only Father, is eternally with that one, and to that one is now returned. 
Never allow yourselves to be led astray by the teachings and the time-worn fables of another people. Nothing of any use can be got from them. If we are still living in the practice of Judaism, it is an admission that we have failed to receive the gift of grace. Even the lives of their divinely inspired prophets were instinct with Jesus Christ. Indeed, the only reason they were persecuted is that they were inspired by his grace, so that they might convince future unbelievers of the existence of one sole God, who has revealed himself in his son Jesus Christ, word of his own from silent proceeding, who in all that he was and did gladden the heart of the one who sent him. We have seen how former adherents of the ancient customs have since attained to a new hope, that they have given up keeping the Sabbath and now order their lives by the Lord's day instead. The day when life first dawned for us, thanks to him and his death. That death, though some deny it, is the very mystery which has moved us to become believers and endure tribulation to prove ourselves pupils of Jesus Christ, our sole teacher. In view of this, how can it be possible for us to give him no place in our lives when even the prophets of old were themselves pupils of his in spirit and look forward to him as their teacher? Indeed, that was the very reason why he, whom they were rightly awaiting, came to visit them and raise them from the dead. Be one in thought and feeling, love the brethren, be compassionate and self-effacing. That is what you have been called to do, so that you may inherit a blessing. Love one another as much as brothers should, respect one another sincerely, and serve the Lord. That is what you have been called to do, so that you may inherit a blessing. Let us pray. Be gracious, Lord, to us who serve you, and in your kindness increase your gifts of grace within us, so that fervent in faith, hope and love, we may be ever on the watch, and persevere in doing what you command. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.